The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of KSMQ Public Service Media Incorporated or its assigns. Welcome to Garden Connections. I'm your host, Stephanie Passingham. Well, today we're going to be visiting a peony garden. We're out at Astland Peony Gardens. We're going to learn all about this beautiful and fragrant plant. We're also going to hear from Chef Stephen Larson, who's going to give us another great recipe, this one for grilled romaine. And we'll also be learning about container gardening. I hope you'll stay with us on Garden Connections. Well, we're out here in the beautiful countryside near Wanamingo, and we're visiting a peony farm. We're at Aspland Peony Gardens, and we're here with Bruce and Don Roll. Don is here to tell us all about the gardens and how they got started. Thank you so much for letting us come out. Yeah, thank you. So you started with just a few, and now you have thousands. Tell us how that happened. Well, Bruce always liked peonies, but and but he didn't like the fact that they flopped on the ground. Sure. So. We were at a peony garden 19 years ago in Faribault, Minnesota, and the gentleman noticed that we weren't really paying attention to his flowers. <laughs> and so he called us over and showed us some that stood up. And so we bought 13 plants that day, and that was our beginning. And that's just a different variety of peony? Mm-hmm, yep. They're different hybrids. So now they've um, built into them very strong stems. Great, so you don't need to do any of kind of the lattice work or sometimes people weave. No, you don't have to cage them. them. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the kinds of flowers and colors that you have available here. We have pinks and reds and whites, but then we also have corals and a yellow. And a yellow and one. A lot of, That's and unusual. variegated ones. And are the flower heads all the same? Some I see are really ruffly and full and others are more delicate. And how right. would you describe the difference between the blooms themselves? We have Japanese singles and doubles, and uh, they're more so like flowers, so they're not, they don't get heavy like a big pom-pom old-fashioned peony does. Okay. So when it gets wet, it flops on the ground. Okay. So these stand up more, they're lighter weight. And the care for these plants is, they are perennial, mm -hmm. obviously, and how long, you started this about 20 years ago, do you have some of your original plants still with you? Yes, we do, yes we do. And how many have you expanded to? You started with? Thirteen. Thirteen? Mm-hmm. And now we have over 4,000. Over 4,000. And it smells so wonderful. I, I wish people could just smell in the air. You can just, that beautiful fragrance is just wonderful. Some peonies are stronger than others. Is that true? Yes, yes. Not all of them smell the same, and not all of them so, smell the same to the same person. Oh, okay, sure. So I always tell people it's best if you just come out and smell for yourself. And just check it out. Yes. Do you have a favorite in the garden? Yes, we do. It's Nippon Beauty. I'll show you. Great. Let's take a look. So I see you plant in straight rows. Do you do mm -hmm. mechanical cultivation or is this all hand weeded? I mean, it looks your beds look great. Well, in the spring, when the plants are smaller, obviously you could till down the rows. Mm -hmm. But then it's just a matter of keeping up with coming out here for two hours every day and just going down with the, with the, the hoe. stirrup hole. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's a lot of work. Yeah. That's a lot of work. So this is your favorite, is that right? Yes, it is. It's beautiful deep, almost magenta color. And this one is called again? Nippon Beauty. Nippon Beauty. This is one of our 13 originals. Okay, beautiful. Just the center is just tipped in gold. It yep, has a it. faint yeah. smell, but not an overpowering. Not strong, yeah, I noticed So that. I can take a whole bouquet to work and not clear out the office. <laughs> sure, that's right. And this white one that you have over here, what's this that one called? This is Fairbow Gold. And this is also one of our thir 13 originals. Really lacy on the inside. Mm -hmm. So now a bud like this, is that when you would cut it and bring it in? Or how do you know when to cut that flower? When is it before the, it's open or after? If you don't want to bring the ants or any bugs in, you cut them when their bud feels like a marshmallow. Oh. And then if you bring it in and put it in water, and the next day it'll open for you. So this one feels a little bit too hard. Is right. that right? Right, okay. yep. It has mm -hmm. to be softer, something, something more like that one up there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. It's squishy like a marshmallow, so then, you know, you can bring it, cut it and bring it in. Bring it in. And here's a lovely pink one. And this is what you would call a single pink, is that right? Yes, this is Burning Bright. 
has a nice compact bush. How does this one smell? And I don't think there's a lot of smell no, to not it. Not a lot, it's light. Yep, as you can tell, the stems are very sturdy on this one. Mm hmm very thick. So she stands up very well. Excellent. Well, I understand Bruce is working on some of your plant breeding here, developing some new varieties. I think yes. I'll go check out what he has to do. Thank you so okay. much, Don, for Thank showing you. me. Thank you. Hello, Bruce. Hi. I was just talking to Dawn and she said you are doing some plant breeding over here. Yep, I'm hybridizing some peonies. Great. Tell so, us, what does that involve? What's the process? Um, you actually go in on a peony here, you go into the center, and I'm ripping out petals <laughs> to, get, like fun. Mm -hmm, to get rid of all the little pollen stems. Oh, okay, in so there. you take out the insides. Yep, you take out the insides and then I take a my pollen donor, which just happens to be the crinkled white, crossway. and okay. I actually just come in and I dabble it and I get the whole plant filled with pollen. So you're after putting pollen on this very center part. Yep, in the very center part. And you see, I got so much pollen there, it looks like you powdered sugared the plant right, almost. Right, it does. And so when that happens, what you're trying to do is take some characteristics from this one yep. and cross it with this one. What do you like about this flower? Um, it's a very prolific plant. It's over there. It actually has lots of flowers. And then what do you like about this one? I like the fact that this is a nice bush. It's very sturdy. We actually bought... These are big stems. Yes, these are big stems. So we figured we want that capability. We, we're looking for the characters of the strength. All right. So, so you got a paper sack? Yep. Then after I cross pollinate it, I put a sack over it so the honeybees don't come along and with some oh, other pollen and, share something else that you don't and want. bring it in because I need to keep track of who the original plant was as well as who the pollen donor, the pollen was. donor was. And this one too, I believe? Yep. And so once you've done this, then you're going to collect seed, is that right? Yep. From these? In about this August, um, the plants will form seed pots. And if you can see up here, this spent flower up there, it has little pods right here. Mm -hmm. And those are the seed pods. And once they get pollinated, they'll actually, and set seed, they'll get about that long and they'll be filled with 10 to 12 seeds. If the seed grows, because sometimes they don't all grow, mm -hmm. and I get a plant that I like, and it's, that'll take three to five years before it actually grows where you'll see the flower. See the first bloom. That's see the a first long bloom. time to be patient. Yep. So how long do the blooms usually last? These are kind of on the tail end, but and you've got buds coming yet still. We're kind of the end of yeah. May, first part of June. They'll last about a week or so. Mm -hmm. And what makes the, bat, the bush look like it blooms a lot longer mm -hmm. is this one has side buds on it. So first the main one will bloom and then it'll get spent and it'll start dropping its petals. Mm -hmm. And then these side buds will come along. But if you're buying these or having these in your yard for cut flowers, mm -hmm. the best thing to do is in the spring when these side buds are about the size of peas, okay, is actually small. come right out in the spring and snip them off. And take them off. And take them off. And actually the main flower that you left will get a lot larger. Okay, so if you like singles that are bigger, mm -hmm. trim. If yep. you like bunches that are smaller, you mm -hmm. can go ahead and leave these and just do maybe smaller bouquets Correct. in your house. Mm -hmm. And how long do peonies stay in bloom? Do they start mid-May? How long can you expect? If you're going to include this in your landscape or you want to look at this for cut flowers, when should you expect peonies usually to start blooming and when are they done? The very early season usually starts around Memorial Day here in Minnesota. And it pretty much ends right around Father's Day. So it's so, fairly short. Yep, it's very, it's about five to six weeks is the best you can get. Mm -hmm. And they're categorized into different bloom periods of very early, early, so mid. So you can buy a specific plant. If you really want to stretch it out, you make sure you have some of everything. Right, you can get five or six different plants and you can get five to six different weeks of blooms. So when you divide these, when should folks plant peonies then? September or October is the best time to plant peonies. So when they get those bare roots, they should put them in the ground? Yep, put them right in the ground. And we've had people forget, leave them in the garage all winter and plant them in the spring and they still have grown. Excellent. Well, you have a beautiful garden here. Thank you so okay, well, much for thank inviting you. us to come take a look. Okay, thank you. Stay tuned for more Garden Connections.
We often forget that some types of lettuces are really good cooked, like this next recipe for grilled romaine. Here on the platter, we have some beautiful little gem romaine. It's a small, compact heirloom variety. And to cook that, really all we need to do is drizzle it with a little extra virgin olive oil, give it a sprinkle of kosher salt, and a few grinds of freshly ground black pepper. The next thing we'll do is put it on the grill for a couple of minutes. And we'll want to let it cook just until it gets some nice grill marks and is just a little bit charred. Of course, it always looks good if you can put some pretty crosshatch marks on it as well. So we're going to rotate it while it's cooking. But remember, this is lettuce, so it's not going to take very long. So to finish the dish, we need to give it just another quick drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. A squeeze of fresh lemon juice. And a nice grating of Reggiano Parmesan cheese. And there we have it, grilled romaine lettuce as a vegetable side dish. These recipes have it all, easy, tasty, and healthy. Garden greens, because there's nothing better than eating fresh from your garden. Thanks, Chef Larson. Another great recipe. We're looking forward to giving that one a try. Well, now we're going to talk about container gardening, and our special guest is Cindy from Dolan's Landscape Center. Cindy, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for inviting me. Container gardening seems to be so popular. Why is that? Part of it is um, people are very busy now, and they don't have time to tend a big garden. Okay. So they can do smaller pots, and it's a lot easier con to control weeds and insects when you've got a small area rather than the whole yard. That's true. That's true. Containers, huge variety. Tell us what are some of the choices that people can select from. Limitless. I mean, you can start with the, your basic terracotta pots if you want to, mm -hmm. but you can go to a rummage sale and pick up different little odds and ends. Okay. These little things here that were Cute. picked up at a yep. rummage sale. Just Lots of old character buckets. in these. A lot of character. Yep. Um, a tackle box that was turned into a little succulent garden there with little that hens and great. chicks. And um, not something you would use otherwise. I mean, it's in disrepair. For it was use something of that was in the dump that she mm -hmm. picked up and she planted it up. I'll be darn. Lots of other choices. Still, baskets are still very popular. Baskets, um, hanging baskets. I mean, you can go with the, the traditional plastic hanging basket, mm -hmm. or you can get something where it's a little more woven and decorative, and you can put those out, you know, wherever you want in your yard and move them around. You know, if something's not getting enough sun in one spot, you can move it and switch it to Very a more mobile. sunny spot. True, another advantage of containers. Mm -hmm. And what is it, what is this thing? That, to me, looks like it was an old lantern of some sort, and it just, you know, cries for something like a, a yellow marigold yellow in there. Marigold. That would be really cute. Great choices. And you also can go to something a little bit larger as well, that all of them have to sit right, right. on the ground. Right. This one here has its own little stand. You can spend a little money or a little money. This one is one that I spent a little more money on, but it is on its fifth year right now. So and it's using durable. the same cocoa liner in there mm -hmm. that I just dumped the old soil out that was in there, put it back into my garden, that I, my vegetable garden. Right. And I start with fresh soil every year, and it sits out in front of my house. In front of your house. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So size is an issue we've got from small, this little lantern piece, to very large. Mm -hmm. How do people know what size to select for what they might want to plant? Well, you're not going to take something like this where it is in a four and a half inch pot and try to get it into that little three inch mm -hmm. hole. Might look beautiful and overflowing to start very with. Very cute. But it's going to stunt the growth. 
yep, it's gonna, going to hurt it. Where you take something like this, where you've got that little plug in there, loosen the soil, plug it in there, Get and in there. we're good. And don't get the soil all the way up so it can you know, kind of get in there a little bit. Right. So something that's maybe a quarter, if you looked at the root ball, if a you quarter use a, of like a space? four pack, a lot of four packs out there, okay. and that's what you want to use for something that's got the small opening like the that. Small size. So you get something larger. Mm -hmm. I mean, in something like this, I've got two plants in there right now. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty but good I can size. get three or four plants in there depending on how I want to do this. And I'm just going to have you grab that petunia there and just set it right in front. Three plants might be just enough for this this one. That looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. Looks great. So we're actually going to pot up a couple of examples today. So we're going to pot so something up. Here's one. This is another kind of flea market find. Is that right? right? Yes. Yes. And I was always taught you have to put a rock in the bottom to cover that hole. Now with something like this, do you have to drill a hole? Or you do need to drill a hole. Okay. You need a hole in the bottom so that you have drainage. And that was the old theory behind putting the rocks into your containers because they wanted to have some drainage. You don't want your plants sitting in, sit in water. water. Um, you don't want to sleep in a wet bed. They don't either. They don't either. So you water in the morning. You have the rocks in there to get some drainage. Unfortunately, most of the soil gets down in with those rocks and sometimes, you know, you they kind of doesn't work. And it washes out the bottom, is that part of what we're concerned about? Um, if there's a large hole in the bottom, I know there's some pots that come with a large hole, and just taking a stone, covering that hole, putting your soil on there, you can still get the drainage, mm -hmm. but you're not going to have you know, all those rocks in there. Okay. So The reason we're putting rocks in this one mm -hmm. is because this container is so light that if we get a plant in there, um, it'll that be top heavy. Light. Yep. So we put the rocks so in there. Over. So that's yes. more designed for weight right. in this particular area. So I'm going to have you put some soil in there. Okay. I'm just going to have you do one scoop right now because there's a couple tricks that you want to do with your containers. Okay, you put a little bit of soil in there and then you can get a soil, a moisture holding product that you, it's got the little granulars in there and this one has a little transplant and, and fungus um, protection in this one. So there's some and little crystals. And that'll help soak up the moisture? The little crystals will absorb the water and then you've got a little medicine in there for it right away to help okay. with transplant shock. Okay. So you put that in there. And any dirt, just a regular potting mix? You, you want you something, dirt? I'm going to get in here and just use my hands. <laughs> this is a, a peat moss vermiculite perlite mix. Okay, yep, you can it's see some It's very that. light and yes, you do want light because what these do is absorb water. So you, when you water, and this is the key, water slowly, water all the way around so it all gets moist. So and not just at the center where, where, where the, the drain is. hole yep. is okay. and it drains out and right, right away. Through. Because then your outside edge is still dry. Sure. And so. do you find that containers need to be watered more often? Is that just... They do. Um, like the, the hanging basket we were talking about, you've got it hanging there and it blow dries. Oh, especially sure. on these windy days sure. that we've been having. So definitely watering maybe twice a day. Especially if it has like an open weave. I know this right. large one you have has a kind of almost a liner here. Very good drainage, it's but it's not going to hold that water in. So okay. that again, you water slowly and I have a rain head on mine so it filters okay. the water out. Yep. So it's not hard, doesn't blast it. Yep, get all the way around and I'll water it once. Go water my other plants, come back and water it and a water second it again. and maybe a third time. So oh, that yeah. peat moss the, the little crystals in there all absorb. Has a chance to soak mm -hmm. that up. All right. Okay, so, so you're going to grab. There, and this is about half full. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is pull this out of here and save your tags. <laughs> I've got people that come out and say, I had this beautiful plant. And I want the same thing. And I want the same thing. And oh, yeah, I didn't save my so tags. So what are you doing here? What I'm doing here is I'm breaking that root ball up. Because if we just planted it, the roots were all wound going, around there. Yep. And they just keep going around and around. If you open it up, the roots can now go out. Separate. So we can put that in there and we can take some more soil and I'm just going to have you put a little bit in there. There you go. And what we'll do is we'll press it down around the sides and then I'm going to tip the plant the other way so we can get the other side. Ready? I'm going to turn it. Okay. And I take my fingers and just pack it down in there and then we're going to water it. Any and more? Are we good? Oh, yep. Just a little, a little bit more. more. Because you do want to leave a little bit of edge so that when you do water, the water doesn't run over, over the, the top, top right away. Sure. So when we water this, and I do have a watering can here. 
and great colors too. This I thought gray pot blue and with this the has watering got a little can, bit of gray in the leaves. But you water it gently, and this one has a little water head on, and you can and the water is kind of floating on there. Mm -hmm. Let it soak in, and we'll go back and water it a couple more times to make sure it's thoroughly saturated mm -hmm. all the way to the bottom. When you start getting water through the bottom hole, then you know you're you're doing well, and maybe well. a little bit more just to make sure everything is soaked up. This looks great from okay. a design perspective. What are some things that people should look at? Tall, short, variety, Preference. colors? Preference. You know, because okay. so this is a like. water pitcher, so my blue is flowing over. So, I mean, Very you could nice. even set it on a table with a little bit of tilt. Tilt so it looks like it's pouring out. So it looks like it's pouring Very out. Very nice. So something like that. Okay. So you can not only do flowers, but you can also do vegetables. Yes, we can. And Show us an example of vegetables. One of the what things we're going to do is right here again a rummage sale type product she got it for a dollar <laughs> all right great buy great buy and what we're going to do is first of all we're going to line it with plastic and all i did was take a garbage bag and just cut it off yep and i put this in here and we'll just kind of line it it'll overhang here while we're working just temporarily and okay. then we'll tuck it in now the other thing drop my scissors is in the bottom where you see the holes there that's where you want to punch your drain holes because sure. you need drainage. Again, you don't want to sleep in wet right. bed. And plastic would they hold don't either. Very well, so you yes. do need those holes. So especially a garbage bag. I mean, okay. that's going to hold so pretty good. You've got about good. six holes in there. Oh, we're going to do a few of them in there. So, six. and I'm kind of trying to find where the where holes the are in the we, basket. Yep. Okay. So now right. we can fill soil. Do you have the scoop yet? I have the scoop. All right. More let's soil. put some soil in there, and we're going to have fun with this one. Again, you're going to fill it about oh a third of the way full. And then we're going to put that, that uh, moisture control in there with the transplant shock preventive. A little more? Good? That, that's probably that's good. good. Okay. Because you want to get, a, yeah, about a third of the way. And then the package always tells you how much to put in there. And I'm, I'm guesstimating, but, you know, I also cook, so I... <laughs> So a little to, bit of this, pinch of yes, this, pinch of that. That's right. I know my sister asked one time, how much is a pinch? Well, we measured it and we did pretty good. <laughs> good. <laughs> All right, we're going to put a little bit more soil on top. On top of that? Actually, we're going to put a lot more because we're going to fill it almost to the top. With what we're doing, I'm just going to be transplanting some little tiny plants in there. Are all vegetables suitable for container gardening? Um, most things are. The, the trick is to have a container that's big enough for them. Ah. Um, when you have a tomato, the bigger the pot, the better. Because they have an extensive root system. One right. tomato per pot. One per pot. Got it. Peppers work great. I know my parents lived on a dairy farm and they retired from farming and it's like, well, you got to have a garden. And I did, I think, about a dozen pots. And I think that's probably right that's about good. good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm just going to water this a little bit for right now, just to get her started there a little bit. But anyway, I had the 12 pots, and my dad could go out on the porch and sit there, and if there were any weeds, he could pull them out. Mm -hmm. He could sit on the porch and pull his onions out. We did onions. We did radishes. We did carrots. See, this does bead a tomatoes. little bit on top before mm -hmm. it soaks in. Yep. So you just have to yep. be slow and patient. Slow and patient. All right, so in this basket, we're going to put? We're going to put salad. Salad. We're going to do salad. Basket. Now, Excellent. I'm thinning in my garden right now, and so I just dug these guys out. And you'll see they look sad. They look a little sad. Well, we got that transplant shock thing in sure. there. So what we're going to do is just very carefully pull some of the lettuce out. You got the leaves. Are these all the same? They're all different. This they're is a mix. Different. Okay. And we're just going to take our finger and make a little hole and just press the soil around those roots. But like I said, he's going to look a little sad right now because yeah, you, you know, stand them up and they look pretty good. He was, he was doing really well in my garden, but like I said, I need to move some things around. Yep. So you get the roots down in it, press the soil around it, and we're, we're making a salad. And the other part of this salad is, I like onions in my salad. So what I've got here are some onion sets. I've got some people that ask me, you know, I want the, the green onions, the mm -hmm. little green the onions. Early ones, yep. That's not it. It's already too big. No. Because it does look too big. It does look yep. big. But this is just the set 
the onion is very tiny inside. Mm -hmm. So yeah. once it gets yay green. big, yep. that's your green onion. That's when you pull them. And then you can if just... you leave them, that's when you get the bigger bulbs. And all you do is just kind of press it into the soil a little bit. You don't have to press it very far. And so you don't even cover that up? Nope, you don't have to cover it. Just want to leave the you can just put a few in up. there. And I've got some other colors too. That's one thing I like about onion sets is, you know, you can get your sets and we'll get you a couple there and we'll put some more lettuce in there. But you'll have mixed greens and you, actually in a few days, you'll be able to come back with your scissors. Um, let's find this one right here. He'll get some more leaves on there and you can just come through and cut and you've got your so baby lettuce. Cut and come again and he'll yes. keep producing. It'll keep going. Great idea. The more you the more you keep cutting it, the more it'll keep growing. Well, Cindy, thank you so much for showing you. You've given us some great ideas, design ideas for things that you can find just picking up at rummage mm -hmm. sales, vegetables, flowers, herbs. Great suggestions. Thanks so much right, for joining us. Well, I hope you've learned something on today's show, and I hope you'll return again next week for the next Garden Connections. I'm your host, Stephanie Passingham. On Garden Connections, we'd love to see photos of your garden. Or, if you have questions for our garden experts, contact us by emailing garden at ksmq.org or like us on Facebook.